In this lesson, you're going to learn how to graph a log function without a calculator. So we've already graphed exponential functions without a calculator, and that's actually what we're going to start with right here first, um, using a table of values. And then we're going to look at and see how closely related a log function is to an exponential function. OK, so let's start with a table of negative 2 to 2. So 3 to the negative second power gives me 1 ninth. 3 to the negative first power gives me 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1, 3 to the 1st is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So I have my coordinates here, and I'm going to go ahead and plot those to the right. Okay, so I've plotted those points to the right, and I've drawn the smooth curve through those, and so we are looking at an exponential growth curve. Um, I also see that if I were to decrease in values here in my table, I would get closer and closer to y equals 0, so I do have an asymptote here at y equals 0. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, fill that in here, that I have an asymptote at y equals 0. My x-intercept does not exist because it never crosses the x-axis, right? We have a, um, an asymptote there. Now the y-intercept we found already in our table, it's 0, 1. The domain here would be all reals. I can plug in any value for x, but my output will always be greater than 0. Now when we switch over to a log function, in the second example here, it says sketch the graph of y equals log base 3 of x. Now, in this case, what you would normally be asking yourself here for table values is 3 to the y power equals x. So 3 to some power y should equal x. So actually, when we create a list of tables here, we actually want to fill out the y column instead. Okay, It's easier to fill out the y in a log. So for a log function, I want you to change it to an exponential. And then I want you to fill out the table for the y column. So fill in the y values. OK. So now when we plot these points, um, I'm still going to do the same thing. I evaluate 3 to the negative second power. I would get 1 ninth. 3 to the negative first power is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the first gives me 3. And 3 squared gives me 9. So I'm actually going to go backwards and plug in, like I said, the values for the y to get the x. All right, so if you look at the table of values here, they are, in fact, opposites. This point 2, 9 becomes the point 9, 2 on our log function. And that's because these are inverses of one another. Okay, now I'm going to plot these real quick, and I would like you guys to do the same thing. So plot these coordinates here on the right, and then um, I'll pause so we can take a look at the graph. Okay, now in this case, I see that I actually have an asymptote here because if I were to try to um, decrease the values in the y column, so let's say I plugged in negative 3 here, then I would end up with 1 27th for the x. If I continue to decrease my y values here, these x values get closer and closer and closer to 0, but they never quite hit 0. So I do have an asymptote here at x equals 0. So it's basically the exact opposite of what we just saw in the exponential graph. So there's my asymptote at x equals 0. So I'm going to fill that in. All right, now the domain here is also a little bit different than our domain in the last graph. Our domain here, the x values will never, ever be negative. No matter what I plug in for the y, these outputs here, if you look at the x, are always positive. So our x value is always positive. And for our range, our y outputs here can, all, can be any number. So they're all reals. Now, um, we have an x-intercept this time. The x-intercept is at 1, 0. Right, here's our coordinate 1, 0. It clearly crosses the x-axis, and we see that here in our table. Um, there is no y-intercept, though, because it never hits the line um, x equals 0. So it does not exist. Okay, so this is your first graph in sketching a log graph. So again, all you have to do is make sure that you are converting this into an exponential and then using a table of values by selecting first your y's and then um, coming up with the x-values. Okay, in problem 3, if I want to change this into an exponential function, I have 1 half to the y power equals x. So when I plug in my values here, negative 2 to positive 2, um, when I plug in negative 2 to this 1 half to the negative second power actually gives me 4. 1 half to the negative first power gives me 2. 1 half to the 0 power is 1. 1 half to the first power is 1 half. And 1 half to the second power is 1 fourth. So I'm going to pause real quick and then plot those points. Please do the same. Okay, so as you can tell from the graph here, um, it looks like these values can get closer and closer and closer to x equals 0, but never quite touch. So I do have an asymptote here at x equals 0. So let me draw that one in. 
I do have a y intercept, or I'm sorry, an x intercept, and that x intercept is at 1, 0. I do not have a y intercept because it never crosses that y axis here. Um, my domain is going to be x is greater than 0, and my range here is all reals. So really similar actually to the last graph that we just worked on, except for the shape is a little bit different. Okay, the last graph that we're going to look at um, is actually a translation of graph number 3. Now I'm going to plug in the y here, so I have y equals negative 2 plus log base 1 half of x. Okay, now we are going to use the same strategy here of trying to rewrite this as an exponential equation. However, when I do that, I actually want to isolate the log first, so I'm going to move that 2 to the other side. So now I have y plus 2 equaling log base 1 half to the x. Now when I convert this to the exponential, I have a base of 1 half. My exponent, though, is actually this entire expression. So it's y plus 2 in the exponent here, equaling my argument, which is x. So I have 1 half to the y plus 2 equals x. So now when I create my table of values, negative 2 to 2, um, it's going to look a little bit different when I plug in that negative 2. When I plug in that negative 2, I end up with an exponent here of actually 0. So I have 1 half to the 0 power, that gives me 1. When I plug in negative 1 for this input here for the y, I have negative 1 plus 2, which is going to give me 1 half to the first power, which gives me 1 half. When I plug in 0, I end up with 1 half to the second power, so that would give me 1 fourth. When I plug in 1, same thing, I think you get the point, that would give me 1 eighth. And when I plug in 2, I get 1 half to the fourth power to give me 1 sixteenth. So these points are the points that you're going to plot now to the right. So I want you to pause and uh, plot these points again. Okay, now in this case, um, when I go to plot these points, I actually have a pretty jumbled uh, set of points right here. It doesn't really give me a very clear picture of what this graph is going to look like. So when that happens, I want you to create more values in the Y column. So um, I'm going to plug in points like negative 3 and negative 4 um, instead of plugging in points like 3 and 4 because I know that if I plug in 3 again, I'm just going to get a very small fraction. Um, it's going to get closer and closer to the line x equals 0, which is why I've drawn this asymptote here, but I don't really know what it looks like going in this direction. So that's why I'm decreasing the y value here. And when I plug in negative 3, I end up with 1 half to the negative first power. So I end up with the point 2, negative 3. So when I go to plot this, now the points aren't nearly as close. Okay? If I plug in negative 4, I end up with 1 half to the negative second power. And that would give me 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4 for a coordinate. And I'm going to assume that that's going to continue to, to grow in this direction here. Um, so, looking at my graph, um, I have a much better picture and better understanding of this graph. So when I go to answer these questions, um, it'll make a little bit more sense. Now I do have a, an x-intercept. That x-intercept is here at 1 fourth 0. So I have a point 1 fourth 0. I do not have a y-intercept. It doesn't exist because I have an asymptote at x equals 0. So I'm going to graph that. Oops. x equals 0. And the domain here is going to be all values that are positive for my x, right? All these here were positive values, and my range is going to be all reals. So again, whenever you have a um, function where it's written a little bit differently, to isolate it, make sure you're always getting the log by itself first, and then rewriting it as an exponential. It's still the same strategy. You're still going to rewrite as an exponential equation like this, and then pick your table of values for your y column. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. Um, tomorrow you're going to get some more practice with this. Be ready to come into class graphing a log function. Nice job. See you tomorrow.